Okay, this is the uh, this is the lecture for uh, for logic design for Monday, the uh, uh, September the twenty one, and uh, so let's let's um, first we'll take a quick look at the syllabus, and uh, here we are in week uh, five. Pretty amazing. We're starting our fifth week of the semester. Hard to believe. Okay, so anyway, um, so we, uh, so the 21st, uh, we're going to, we're, we're, we're going to start unit five, but probably what I'll do today instead is I'll, I'll probably mostly just uh, go through the test. And then, um, and then and then I'll start unit five on on Wednesday, so I think that's what I'll do. Um, so we'll we'll push this back a little bit. Um, so note homework five is coming due on the thirtieth, so you've got a little bit of time left for that. Uh, have a little bit of breathing space here, but you might want to go ahead and get started on it. Um, I think it is on KMAP, so so you probably have, might might want to wait till Wednesday to start it. Okay, um, so let's shrink this down. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, and I'll shrink myself down here too. And uh, I'm going to just log on and work the test. I, I am going to have to, I'll have to pull up the um, the the the, the uh, document. So there was um, there was one. Um, problem with the document which I did correct but some people had already taken the test uh, it you know it wasn't gigantic but it was definitely a typo and it might have uh, there was at least one student that uh, that was confused about it I, I had a little thing here that said uh, note the inverter on A and C inputs and also on F well there is no inverter on F I mean here's the inverter right and there's none there so if you looked at the diagram it should have been painfully obvious that there was no inverter on F but it did say to note it uh, because in a previous you know test I did have an inverter on F but I took it off on this one but I forgot to clean out the verbiage so um, so anyway so if you took it when that was a problem and you uh, and and you and uh, you got that problem wrong although you may not know uh, but if you assumed an inverter on F that that may have caused you problems and then you can uh, you can send me a text and uh, I'll look at your score and see if you missed six and if you did I'll see if you missed it based on the assumption that there was an inverter there and if that's what it looks like I'll give you credit um, I will try and go through and do that uh, yeah so I'll do that all right so so I'm gonna so we'll refer to this uh, and then um, we'll also refer to the I'll bring up the test and refer to those questions so let me get rid of this and then I thought I was on Blackboard here. What happened? Here. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so we'll do the test. So I, I think I'll just log on and take the test. Um, so begin. And it gives me the exact same circumstances that you guys have to do. Um, all right. So so here's question one. Okay, and the questions are randomly. Random. Some questions refer to figures, some don't. So general question, convert the POS from A, B prime C plus A prime B prime C plus B C B, plus B prime C plus B prime C. Okay, so the first thing you should, and I, you, you're not going to be able to see this. I can tell that right now. This is going to be terrible. So I don't know how we're going to make this work. Uh, probably have to do... Uh, Probably have to do the magnifier. So let me pull up the magnifier. And um, let's see. Yeah. And magnifier. Uh, uh, let's see, where's the magnifier? Magnifier. On. Okay. And then, okay, see if that works. Uh, 
Well, crap. I don't see where it came up. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, yeah, okay, here it goes. Now you can see it. All right, so convert POS. So this is pretty straightforward. So uh, first thing you notice is you have a B prime, C prime, and a B prime, C prime. So clearly you get rid of one of those. And then you also notice you have an A, B prime, C prime here. So because of X plus, uh, because of uh, X, Y plus X equals X, you can get rid of this where you let b prime c prime be x and the a be the y. And so that just leaves you then with a prime b prime c plus b prime c prime. Now, the first thing to do here is factor out the b prime. Now you have b prime times a prime c plus c prime. And then you can use the, uh, the you can use reducing the literal, which is uh, x y prime plus y equals x plus y. So you can, you can get rid of the c, uh, and then you wind up with a B prime times the quantity A prime uh, plus C prime. And that is in uh, POS, that is in POS form. And uh, there it is, B prime times A prime plus C prime. Now if you, if you got this one, you were close, but, uh, well this one isn't, this is wrong anyway. Uh, but it's kind of close to the right answer, so it was a distractor. But the only one, if you, uh, <coughs> hopefully, if you had this, you would have you would have picked that. All right, so so I'm going to select. Uh, so I'm going to select um, this one, which is uh, no, sorry, I'm going to select this one, and then I'll hit save answer. And then it goes on to the next one. All right, using figure five for question C. So let's see if we can bring up figure five. And that may or may not be possible. Uh, but, uh, I don't know if I can do that or not. So, so let's see. Um, yeah, oops, this is be getting out of hand here. Okay, here's three, here's four. It's going to be difficult with these figures. All right, so here's figure five. Okay, so let's go back to the quiz. Um, and that's going to be, so we'll get rid of this. Um, I guess I have to do this instead. And then we go over here. Uh, is it true that some codes cannot be used for computations? Question C. Yes, that's true. Uh, some codes cannot be used for computations. Uh, like gray codes, you have to use a table to convert them into computable numbers. All right. And so let's save that answer and go to the next one. Change this expression to SOP form. Uh, so you have a prime b plus a c. Pick the correct answer. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. Use the m and f because you've got an a prime and an a. So you just you hook up the a prime plus the c quantity times a plus the b. So a prime plus c quantity times a plus b. So you pick this one and you save the answer. That's kind of a pretty straightforward one. All right, use figure seven. Pick all the min terms that would be needed, uh, including the don't care. Well, rather than, maybe I'll uh, drop out of this and then I'll bring this back up and hopefully make sense out of it. So if we do figure seven, uh, so you see here figure seven and, and even this may, may be maybe uh, not not good enough because it's got to be probably made a little bigger okay and then we'll go back to figure seven so here's here's my uh, here's my truth table so the don't care is that's zero one two the don't care is on two okay so you have a one on zero a one on three a one on six and seven and 
the don't care is on two. All right, so pick all the min terms that would be needed, including the don't care. All right, so this one we're going to include the don't care. So that's zero, two, three, six, and seven, because this is the one where we're including the don't care. So we have one, two, three, four, five min terms. All right, let me blow this up again. And then we'll then we'll save the answer. Oh, it's somehow already uh, question four. Yes. So it's saved, and so now we're there. All right. Using figure two, write the eight bit two's complement of fifty five. Well, okay, so that's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go through this, uh, but the main point is here: uh, you do the division, and when you get it then what you want to make sure you do is uh, you want to um, uh, you want to make sure you pad it out to eight bits before you take the two's complement so um, well maybe I'll okay maybe I'll try and do this real quick uh, so for this I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to bring this back and I'm gonna have to expand it switch the camera and hopefully it's not going to take me forever. All right, so I'm, I'm just going to do this. We'll just do this. Uh, and I'm going to do a piece of paper. We'll just do it in, in uh, we'll do it in, in, in marker here. Okay. So, um, so it's, was it 55? Is that right? I think that's right. Let's see. Yeah, 55. Okay. So we take 55, and we're going to divide it by 2. So this is where I made the mistake before. This is actually the problem I worked uh, on one of the lectures. So 55 divided by 2 is, so 50 would be 25, 26 would be 52, 27 would be 54. So this is 27, remainder 1. 2 into 20, 27 is uh, 13. Remainder 1, 2 into 13 is 6, remainder 1, 2 into 6 is uh, 3, remainder 0, 2 into 3 is 1, remainder 1, 2 into 1 is 0, remainder 1. So now we're done, and this is low order, this is high order. So our final, our final, so that's what it should look like. So it's one. So it's starting from the right and working left. It's going to be one, 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 zero, one, one. Right? One, one, zero, one, one, one. Going left to right, right to left, the other way. All right. So now we'll shrink this back down, and we will um, blow this back up, and we'll go over here. All right, so one one zero one one one, and then we'll save it, and we'll go to the next one. Using Figure Four, select the correct answer that matches the circuit in the drawing exactly. All right, so uh, we have to look at the drawing, so we'll s switch out of that. We'll bring this back up. And we'll go to the drawing, and it is there. I uh, know it's there. So we have three AND gates going into an OR gate. So this is in SOP form. So that's A prime D plus B prime C plus A B. All right. So we'll close this, put this back to there, blow it back up. Uh, and so we have. So the only one that's even in SOP form is this one, A prime B plus B prime C, oh, sorry, A prime D plus uh, B prime C plus AB. Yeah, this one. So that's it. The next one. Uh, for C, the correct digital answer is select true and false. Um, okay, uh, the correct answer is digital, select true or false. So, okay, so that's uh, back to uh, figure one. 
Okay, we'll get rid of this. We'll bring this back up. And so back to figure one. Okay, so and it's D. So what kind of code should be, uh, sorry, is the shaft encoder considered analog or digital? Let's see. Well, um, yeah, so the shaft encoder is considered uh, digital. True. Okay, and then we have using figure three. If the expression is true, then the last two columns must be the inverse of each other. All right, so another true false. Let's let's uh, let's shrink it down uh, and go back here. Oops, go back here. All right, so and what did we say it was figure figure three. Yeah, so if the expression is true, then the last two columns must be the inverse of each other. No, of course not. They have to be this exactly the same. So it's false. Save the answer. Go to the next one. All right, using figure five. For question A, the character B requires seven bits true or false. Oops. Did I kill it? I maybe did. Oh, I guess I did. Oh, crud. Yeah, no, there it is. So, figure uh, five. B, the character B requires seven bits, true or false. Yeah, that's right, it takes seven bits. It, all the ASCII characters take seven bits. So that's true. Okay, um, next. Okay, blow it up so you can see it. Write the decimal number for um, 1B.4, base 16. All right, so this is pretty straightforward. Um, so so uh, let's take the, the fractional portion for us. So, so 0.4 is 4 times 16 to the minus 1 are 4 sixteenths. 4 sixteenths is 1 fourth. So it's going to be 0.25. And then, uh, then and we just, we're supposed to write it to two, two significant bits, the fractional portion. So it's going to be xxx something 0.25. All right. So 1b, so, so that's b times 1 plus, which is 16 to the 0, plus 1 times 16. So it's going to be 16 plus 11, or 27.25. So 27.25. And we'll save the answer, and we'll go to the next question. Mar use figure 7. Mark is correct. The simplified solution with the don't care taken is 1. Okay, so... Uh, Yeah, I guess, did I effectively ask this twice? Well, anyway, when you, take the, when you take the don't care as a one, then you have one, you have midterm zero, two, three, uh, six, and seven. So let's write those out and we'll solve those. And so I'm going to, I'll shrink this down and I'll bring this back up. Okay, so so we have min terms uh, 0, 2, 3, 6, and 7, okay? So, so the, the 0 is uh, a prime, b prime, c prime, plus 2, I think that's right. Was it 2 or was it, yeah, I think that's right. A prime, B prime, C prime, plus min term 2, which is uh, A prime, B, C prime, plus 3, A prime, B, C, plus 6, which is A, B, C prime, plus 
ABC prime plus uh, ABC. All right, so there are several different ways you can combine these. Uh, but, and you get different answers. Uh, so I probably, may, uh, in retrospect, I wish I'd um, maybe uh, played with the problem so it was a little less, uh, so there's a little less ambiguity. But anyway, so first we can combine these two. And again, we're going to use the theorem xy prime plus xy equals x. So the y prime in this case is going to be, the y prime will be b and the y will be just regular b. And then ac prime would be the x, ac prime. So what we're going to wind up with then is a, sorry, a prime, c prime, a prime, c prime. So I'll combine these two. Um, now, uh, you don't have to do it that way, but that is one way you can do it. And then you can add in, um, you can combine these two, a prime, b, c prime, and a, b, and you can get a, b. And you can also combine these two, or you can combine these two. So you can wind up with... Uh, uh, sorry, you can combine these two. So you can wind up with either BC or you can combine these two and you can wind up with A prime B. Take your pick. Either one is acceptable. Uh, but you do need, uh, since you've already used both of these two, you have to use every term once, but you can use them multiple times. So both of those are acceptable. So the answer I provided was A prime C so let's, let's get rid of this. We'll make this big again. And so the one that's there is A prime C prime plus uh, B C plus A B. So this is the correct answer. The other answer is uh, with the uh, A prime B terms not present. So that's a little, it's not the greatest problem in the world. I'll be the first one to admit that. Uh, and you know, sometimes it's just really hard to write a great test. Uh, so every test is going to have a little flaw, and that's why, that's why I'm not, uh, that's why I'm not a hard ass when it comes to grading. So we'll cut you a little slack. Um, but it is what it is. Um, okay, use Figure One, select E, select the correct answer. So if you stick the if you stick the target on, uh, so it's off by a couple of degrees. It's clearly going to it's clearly going to affect your pre precision. Uh, sorry, it's clearly going to affect accuracy. So so you could still read it precisely, but you but it's just not going to be an accurate reading. Doesn't affect precision. You can still read it read it with the same degree of precision, but but it's just going to be two degrees off from the right answer. So whatever precision of your reading will persist with the target stuck on two degrees off, but it will it will certainly impact your accuracy. It's not both because it doesn't affect precision. Oh, I screwed that up. Okay. Use figure five for question B. Select the correct answer. All right. So, um, so we have to go back down with this and pull up the data sheet again and it's figure 5 B uh, uh, B years ago with noisy phone lines what code was used to help reduce errors in transmission parity so the correct answer is parity and we will uh, save the answer and press on Okay, using figure seven, the simplified expression with the don't care was simpler than the expression without, the, if, if the simplified expression with the don't care was simpler than the expression, well, let's, let's blow it up. If the, if the simplified expression with the don't care was simpler than the expression without the don't care, then, uh, then, uh, Without the don't care, you should choose the don't care to be a one. Yeah. So if the expression, the simplified expression with the don't care was simpler than without, yes, you should choose the don't you should choose the don't care as a one so that you would include it. So that is true. 
okay? Figure eight, this is the adder. The adder, if designed altogether as one unit, would have nine independent variables. Yes, that's right. Four bits of A, four bits of B, and a carry in. That's four plus four plus one is nine. True. Using figure eight, uh, oh, it didn't switch. Okay, so using figure six, select all the correct max terms for the circuit shown. Okay, so we want figure six, and we want to select the max terms. And we'll bring up the help sheet again. All right, so here's the deal. So with no inverter on the output, this is an OR gate. So the only way you get a zero out is if all the inputs are zero. The only case where that's true is if A is 1, B is 0, and C is 1. That's this row right here. So right here, that's going to be a 0. We're going to have a 0 there. And everything else is going to be a 1. So that would be the only max term. And that only max term then would be max term 5, or M5. So all the max terms, we select 5. Save the answer and go to the next okay and using figure three select the correct value for for the y prime plus z prime times x prime plus y column uh top to bottom left to right okay so now you basically have to fill out that chart and so if you're going to fill out that chart uh we need to look at it again so here we are with the so that's going to be this one so and we're look we're interested in this one now the good news is you mo a lot of the work has been done for you so you just have to look and see okay so uh, one and with one would be one one and with one would be one one and with one would be one but here you have a zero so it's going to be a zero 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 a one and a zero so it's going to be starting left to right it's going to be one 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 zero 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 one zero okay one 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 zero 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 one zero so it's this one down there save the answer next all right we'll blow it up again general question if you change the expression a plus b quantity times b plus c quantity times b plus d to an SOP form, select the correct answer. So this is really simple. Uh, now, don't factor the B out. That's totally wrong. Can't do that. It's illegal. Uh, it's not legal in algebra. It's not legal in switching algebra. But you can use the second distributive law, which effectively does that. And if you remember, we talked about the corollary where you had X plus WYZ equals X plus Y times quantity X plus W quantity times X plus Z. So that's really this. So this is just going to be B plus A, C, D. So that's the correct answer. Save and we go to the next. Convert 33, 33 to binary, write only ones or zeros, and use exactly six bits. Okay, so, well, so this is really easy because you know that, uh, you should know 2 to the 5th is a, is is 32. So if we we switch to our little tablet, uh, we turn off the magnifier and we switch to the little tablet here. So convert 33 to binary. So 33 to binary. So 33 to binary. So we're going to take 33. And we want to get it in six bits. So 2 into 33 is 15, 16. Remainder 1. 2 into 16 is 8. Remainder 0. 2 into 8 is 4. Remainder 0. 2 into 4 is 2. Remainder 0. 2 into 2 is 1. Remainder 0. And 2 into 1 is 0. Remainder 1. So it's going to be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So that's 1 plus this would be 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. 1 plus 32 is 33. So that checks. 
one zero 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 one okay and then we'll get rid of this and we'll blow this up and it should be uh, one one zero one 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 right no I'm sorry I did the wrong stupid thing one one two three four one okay and then save answer and move to the next one all right we know that this expression is true because it's just like the second distributive law no it that's figure three so let's shrink this and we'll look at that it's not it's 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 like the um, it's like the multiplying and factoring what what why does this happen I do not understand this this is the craziest thing oh I see it's uh, like on the hover over the wrong thing okay figure uh, yeah so is this a second distributive law no the second distributive law is x plus y z equals x plus y quantity times x plus z. This is x prime y. This is the same as x prime y plus x z equals x plus y prime quantity times x prime plus z. Anyway, uh, this is not that form. So, so it is not. So that is false. So we'll put false and save answer and go to the next question. All right, using figure one, input the number only for question A. All right, so I already know what this one is, but let me pull this up. So, um, well, let me pull up the, the Word document. So figure one, you're designing a system to test compasses by putting them in the magnetic field and measuring how the needle points. You stick an optical shaft and cutter on the compass needle and then measure the angle it points with a shaft and cutter that is positioned over the compass. The sensor must be able to read the angle over the entire 360 degrees in 15 degree increments. Answer the question. So how many different things must you be able to represent with your digital value? Well, you have 360 degrees divided by 15. Now, that would give you 24, and normally you'd add one if you were doing it uh, in a linear manner. But since it's a circle, your starting point and your end point overlap, and so you don't add one, it's just 24. So the answer here is a 24. And we save that and we'll do the next question. All right, using figure one for question D. So let's go back to figure one. Uh, your design, so D, what kind of code should you be using in the shaft encoder to avoid big errors? We have talked about this a number of times you want to use not a gray code, I mean, not a parity code, but a gray code. So the answer here is gray code. Save the answer, go to the next one. General question. Okay, we'll blow this up. Any switching algebra expression can be represented by a two layer net of which type of gates? Choose all correct answers. Can you do it with and and? No, you cannot. Can you do it with or or? No, you cannot. Can you do it with and or? Yes, that's SOP. Can you do it with RN? That's POS. So those are the two correct answers. Okay. General question. Is it fair to say that the reason the reasons adders are critical to computing designs is that the basic functions of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division are all essentially addition using two's complement? Yes, that is fair. It's a good thing to keep in mind. That's why adders are a big deal. Okay. Figure five for the question, select the correct answer. So this is the uh, putting this thing together. So let's look at uh, let's look at, at the the document again. So we're looking for figure five. That's the little English to Boolean. The ASCII character oh no, sorry. Write a Boolean equation for this sentence. Use variables H W D P. The Cubs will win the World Series if they get big hits, H, or lots of walks plus W, and play good defense or have great pitching. Now, it would be perfectly okay to do H plus W, D, H plus W, D plus P. But it actually doesn't make sense because what that's saying is uh, if they get a lot of walks and play good defense, they'll win. Or if they get good hits 
they'll win. Or if they have great pitching, they'll win. But a much more reasonable reading is that if they get big hits and lots of or lots of walks and play good defense or have great pitching, that they'll be okay. So you group uh, hits and walks together and multiple and and that with good defense and great pitching. So back to this, what we're really looking at here then is, where is my thing? Come here. Okay, yeah. So what you're really saying is you want to combine hits and walks and uh, good defense and great pitching together. Because you could get a lot of hits, but you could still lose if the other team gets more. So somewhere you have to have either defense or pitching. And uh, you can have great defense and pitching still lose because you've got to score a little bit. So this, and then this one doesn't make any sense at all because there was an and between the walks and the uh, defense. So you can't put an or there. That wouldn't be fair. So this is clearly preferred. Now, I didn't make you write it two different ways like I usually do. I sort of didn't do that this time. Okay. General question, change this expression to SOP form. Okay, so A plus C quantity times B plus C quantity times A plus D quantity times A. Well, because you have an A out here all by itself, you can immediately drop the two A terms, A plus C and A plus D. And that just leaves you with A times the quantity B plus C. You just use the first distributive law and multiply the A in there, distribute the A in, AB plus AC. AB plus AC, and now it is in SOP form. This one is not in SOP form, so you know that's wrong. And obviously the D is bogus too, but whatever. All right. All right. The first row of the fragment of a truth table we were given should have an, uh, an output for C out of 1. All right, so that's figure 8. Uh, yeah, so figure 8, we uh, clearly have to do the math here to know the answer to this question. So let's do it. All the way down to the last figure. All right, so the first row. So the first row is A, A, so it's A, it, so it's 1, 0, 1, 0, or A, plus 1, 1, 0, 0, which is C, 1. All right, so let me write that and we'll do the math. Uh, although you should be able to do it easily yourself. Uh, a plus C. So it's just, um, so A is just going to be 1, 0, 1, 0, and C is 1, 1, 0, 0. So, uh, and, then, and then we had a carry in of 1. Okay, so 0 plus 0 plus 1. The carry in always is the low order. That's 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 0 carrier 1. So our carry out is going to be a 1. Okay. So we shrink this down and we can pop this back up. So carry out of 1. That is true. Save the answer. Go to the next. Using figure 5 for question D, Type in a 0 or a 1 only. So question D in figure 5. So we'll shrink this. We'll bring the, the document back up. And um, it's question D. What is the output for a 3 input exclusive OR gate when the inputs are 0, 1, 1? Okay, you just have to know this. And, the, uh, when, and because it's an exclusive OR, if you have two ones and a zero, it is a zero. That that's partly that's how that exclusive function works. So the answer is zero. Uh, so you put in a one or a zero. In this case, it's a zero. Save the answer. Go to the next. All right. Using Figure Seven. So let's bring that up. So using Figure Seven. Mark as correct the simplified solution with the don't care taken as zero. Okay, so the don't care is two. So now we just need uh, min term zero, three, six, and seven. All right, so let's do that. Min term zero, three, six, and seven. I guess I'm going to need a new piece of paper. So, so min term zero is 
a prime b prime c prime plus min term three is uh, a prime b c plus min term six is a b c prime uh yeah and seven is a b c okay you combine these two and you get uh a b you can combine these two and you uh, no you can't uh sorry uh, you can combine these two and you get uh, BC and you can't do anything with this term so you just have to write A prime B prime C prime so that's the final solution and uh, then if we shrink this down uh, and we uh, go back to here and we enlarge it So we have um, A prime, B prime, C prime, plus B, C, plus A, B. So that is the correct answer. Okay, we just have, so there's 30. Well, what, uh, using figure eight, what would the value of just the sum without the carryout be uh, in binary for the second example row in the truth table? Enter a binary number without any leading zeros if there are any. All right, so don't put in the leading zeros, and that's that's because uh, I don't know how this thing will interpret that. So, all right, so let's um, shrink this down, bring up the the figures, go to eight. So we have to add the last two rows. So that's going to be one one zero zero. That's C plus zero one zero one. That's five plus a carrying of zero. So so basically 12 and 5. All right. And we only want the sum. We don't care about the carry out. All right. So let's bring this up and we'll do it. All right. So, so we have A is 1100 zero, zero, and B is 0101. Zero, one. The, carry, the carry in is a 0, so we don't have to worry about it. So zero plus one plus zero is one. Zero, zero is zero. One, one is zero carrier one. One, one is zero carrier one. So our sum only, not counting the carry out, is zero, 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 one. So for getting the leading zeros, we type in a one. Okay, and uh, we will do that then. So we type in one. And then save that answer, go to the next. General question, the inverse of x, y is, pick out the correct choice. Okay, so obviously not x prime, y prime, because you have to invert the and into an or. So obviously not x, y, because you have to invert x and y. x prime, y prime, looks good. Yes, you have to do both of them, so this is the right one. We ignore the distractors, and we push on. All right. Pick all the min terms that would be needed without the don't care. Well, remember, we've got this memorized now. We have the, the min terms without the don't care would be 0, 3, 6, and 7. Save it and go to the next. This is our last question. I've often talked about the fact that sometimes it's important to simplify our logic expressions as much as possible. And that, and that, let's see, how, how can I, um, for some reason it's not doing it. All right. Uh, well, crud. I'll, I'll click left mouse. Control Alt click. Control Alt. I don't know. I can't do it. Why is it not? Okay. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'm having trouble with this. Obviously, you can tell that. Yeah. Select a design target where we, where you would want to simplify as much as possible. All right. So. So in other words, sometimes you really do need to to squeeze all of the extraneous um, gates you can out of a solution. 
Sometimes you don't need to. Which one do you really need to, to simplify it as much as possible? The answer is when you're developing a new IC from scratch because you're, you're concerned about the surface area that every single one of your logic expressions is going to take up. Whereas when you have an FPGA, you usually have, uh, you're usually implementing your logic with truth tables anyway, and so there's really no point in simplifying much of anything. Maybe occasionally there is, but I mean it's much, much less than when, when you're doing a brand new chip. So clearly it's the chip, and uh, saved, and now save and submit. And we will see. Uh, click here. Yes. Okay, it's submitted. And then we can see our results. Uh, there it is. So, so what did we get? Oh, I got 97. I missed something. Oh, that shouldn't have been, that happened. Oh, this one. Write the A bit two's complement of 55. Oh, I didn't expand it. Did, did I? Did I not do that one? Well, anyway. Uh, oh yeah, I I didn't I didn't I didn't expand it to eight bits, so I got I fell into my own stupidity. All right. Well, anyway, how about that? Yeah. So, story of my life. What can I say? Even the professor can't get his own test right. Okay. So, um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. Um, I might. I might just take a minute and start K maps just for the heck of it. Uh, so we'll be a little bit ahead of the ballpark. So let me let me just do that real quick since we since we didn't take the whole hour to do this, and since you can't ask questions, uh, which normally would happen. Um, okay, so I want the um, five. Oops. Yeah, let me let me. I don't. I didn't actually want that. One. I want this one. And here we go. And then I'm going to bring up this, and I'm going to switch it to me. And I'll move myself up here, maybe at the very top. Okay, so we're going to talk about K map. So. Oh, uh, we'll do a little bit of an intro in the HDL, so maybe I'll do that, and then we'll we'll just be ready to jump on KMAPs on Wednesday. All right, so so this is super important, uh, and this is this is what I teach in logic in uh, DSD. We teach hardware description language. So uh, I don't know if you have been paying attention, but the latest NVIDIA graphics card is, has created quite a stir. Uh, the 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 3000 series i think it's a 3030 or something anyway uh, this card uses uh, 8 nanometer technology and it has 2 billion with a b transistors 2 billion 2 billion transistors on a single chip unbelievable 2 billion 2 billion transistors that is if if you had if you had the transistors if you had uh, you know the two n uh, uh, you know thirty nine oh fours in a box and you tried to put two billion of them on your desk I think it would fill up your whole house that is that is a thousand million that's two thousand million two thousand million transistors. I can't even imagine that, and 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 they and they and the the chip is I'm sure it's it's probably a good sized chip, but it's you know it's probably no more than a you know a, maybe maybe maximum two inches by two inches in size. It's probably not that big. I don't know how big it is, but it's probably not two billion transistors, eight nanometers. Just to give you a perspective, uh, a a red blood cell is. Uh, a red blood cell is about, uh, what is it, about 500 angstroms, I think. Oh, I don't know. I, I used to have this all down. Now I, it's easy to forget. But this is, oh, okay, I know. 
a, a, a COVID, a COVID, um, a, a COVID viron is is about a hundred nanometers. So, on on the virus, you could put a hundred divided by eight, or something like what uh, twelve features across it, something like that. You could put twelve transistors. Sort of. I mean, you, you got to give me a little poetic license here, because obviously these the silicon wafers they have a thickness that's quite impre you know that's like about two two uh, two millimeters. They're about two millimeters thick, but the actual feature size is a is is eight nanometers. So you could so the features literally you could put twelve features on the virus size wise. Or the virus would span across twelve of the transistors if you if the virus landed on your chip. Can you imagine that? So, when you think about two billion transistors, can you imagine having a schematic with two billion transistors on it and trying to hook up two billion transistors so it's going to work like you want? I don't think that's. First off, what what piece of paper would you use? How could you, you'd have to have a room, you'd have to have, a, you'd have to do it outside on a park with a huge parking lot. Just to, just to contain, I don't even know if you could do that. I mean, how big, so let's say each transistor in your drawing was, uh, you know, four or five millimeters, so you could at least see it. That's two billion times four or five millimeters. That's millions of meters. A million meters that's a lot that's a lot of miles this is crazy you could not design this chip with a schematic not possible not humanly possible in fact the only way this can happen is is first of all to break it down into chunks so you can deal with the chunks and then build up the more complex circuit but even those chunks are incredibly complicated you must have some computer-based tools to do this. And you must have some incredibly intelligent synthesizers. And, and clock lines could be running all over the place and you know have no hope of ever making any sense. This is just crazy, crazy, crazy. So, um, so this is very difficult. And uh, so it's not likely, to, not likely to work very well. Um, anyway, uh, so... So, so that's why we need English-based language tools to do these designs. So we can describe these things at high levels and not have to get down into the, to the weeds of, of individual transistors making up uh, memory units and, and uh, switches and truth tables and all this. All these things are constructed with transistors, but we're not, we don't want to get down into those weeds. We want the synthesizer to do that for us. We don't even want to talk about gates or flip-flops. We, we want to talk at a higher level. And that's why we use hardware description languages. The other tremendous advantage is that, uh, that we want to use... We, you, you, I'm sure the NVIDIA guys didn't... I, I'm sure they didn't start from scratch. They built on their previous, uh, their previous works and just improved them and expanded them. So they probably reuse large parts of their existing designs and just modified them uh, and updated them. Now, maybe there are times when maybe you throw out everything and start over, but uh, and maybe this was one of them. I don't know, but I, I don't think so. Um, and then, obviously, we want, we want this powerful synthesizer software to do the work for us. So these days, every single chip that's made is made with a hardware description language. Nobody uses schematics anymore. Uh, and in the United States, almost all the fabrication is done with, in Verilog. There are other hardware description languages. One of them is VHDL. Um, we often use that for complex simulations because it's a little better for simulation. But mostly in the US, Verilog is, is what's used for fabrication. VHDL is maybe used a little more in Europe. So. There are some new HDLs on the on the horizon. Um, System C, 
uh, system Verilog, uh, there, and there's some other ones. And and it's a fair, it's fair to say at this point that they haven't been, uh, that they're being adopted, but but a lot, but still a lot of being done with standard Verilog. And it's also fair to say that our current Verilog and VHDL and even our system C and system Verilog are pretty arcane and difficult to understand and use well. So so we have a lot of we still have a lot of trouble. Uh, uh, because learning VHDLs is is it takes it takes some time. So you really can't you can't overstate the importance of of, of hardware description languages, and uh, and so they're just super super critical part of of the digital design world now. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about System C. It's just one of the things that's coming along. Um, it's, it, at this point, it's more focused on the system level modeling, and that's probably good because we're really moving away from uh, the hardware description languages description of low level uh, features. We're we're really trying to let the synthesizer do that for us. Um, uh, uh, Accelera is also part of this uh, uh, this this uh, open uh, system C initiative. I screwed this up. It's open system C initiative OSCI. And it is becoming a IEEE standard. All right, um, System Verilog. It was it started developed in uh, 2002. Uh, it offers some features that we didn't have before, but it's still not in wide use, still developing. The current HDLs are Verilog and VHDL, and these are extensively and widely used. And still, pretty much everything in the U.S. that's made is made out of Ver Ver Verilog scripts. Okay, so HDL stands for Harvard Description Language. Uh, they're more like a, they're kind of like a programming language, but not really, because they um, they describe the behavior of a digital system, but they also include time constraints, so we can look at timing considerations. It's probably better to call it a modeling language. Um, and the uh, the HDLs can definitely describe electronic components from logic gates all the way to a complete microprocessor and they include electrical aspects rise times fall times delays through gates uh, functional operation um, and pretty much they are used for all current digital systems uh, they can be used as building blocks in larger circuits and they one of their early purposes was simulation even before they were used for for uh, 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 for, synthes for synthesizing. Uh, we can also use them to program our programmable logic chips like our FPGAs and others. To make these very big large-scale integrated circuits uh, we use we use these hardware description languages. Um, all right so um, and when we when we design when we do a design using VHDL or Verilog, we also build in the the simulation part, which we call a test bench, and that should almost always be included. VHDLs allow us to describe a circuit at several different levels. We talk about an algorithmic or behavioral level. We talk about data flow and structural. And then finally, there's a physical implementation, whether it's a new chip or whether it's a programmable logic device like an FPGA. So when these things were first developed, they were originally, uh, at least VHDL, was originally used just to document how the, hard, how the software was supposed to work, or the hardware for that matter. Later on, uh, they were used for simulations. And then finally somebody realized that with, with the proper, uh, really sophisticated software tools, we could actually we could actually use them to make hardware, and that's where we are now. It has a bunch of IEEE standards, um, <clears throat> and um, it does allow us to share uh, knowledge with other designers. Uh, you probably heard a, a, about ARM that makes a lot of you know makes a lot of computers. Well, actually, ARM doesn't make any computers. ARM only writes hardware description language files. And then they lease them to chip manufacturers, who then integrate them with their part, like the processor clock and 
and other peripheral modules, A to D converters, and other things to actually make a chip. And so all ARM does is lease these hardware description language files. Here's a simple description in VHDL. Uh, we'll look at it in very long in a minute. This, this would be an AND gate, that's an OR gate. And, and so you could write this C, which is the output of this AND gate, is A AND with B, and then you put in this little after five nanoseconds, which means there's a propagation delay of five nanoseconds through this. The propagation delay has nothing to do with, with making a part, but it's used in the simulator for trying to simulate the part that we anticipate getting made. So you can't specify 10 nanoseconds or three nanoseconds and have it make a part with a three or a 10 nanosecond delay. But what you do is you know what technologies you're using and you try and model that by making this propagation delay as close to the reality of the final part as you, as you know. And then uh, same with here, we uh, R gate, we also specified a five nanosecond delay here. C or D after five. Now, you don't have to put this delay in, you can leave that out, but then your simulation is not gonna be very realistic. So we normally try and put in the delays and make our simulations realistic. And these, these statements, anytime signals on the right side change, A or B in this case, C or D here, it executes, it, it uh, executes and assigns any change in value to the, to the variable on the left. All right, so there are a lot of advantages of the hardware description languages. They certainly allow us to do these high-level designs of very, very complicated things, which would be virtually impossible to do any other way. And they allow us to simulate these complicated designs so we can find mistakes before we spend all the money to go to the foundry and to make a circuit, and make an integrated circuit. It, it allows us to work at this high level and lets the synthesizer do the heavy lifting. And uh, so you don't have to do designs with these detailed schematics. Um, it also lets you try a number of different ways rather quickly and then simulate those different ways to see if one of them's clearly better than some of the others. It also allows us to, to break our, our project down into various modules and then to sort of put them back together so we, we, we will have a fairly distributed um, ecosystem for our hardware description language. Uh, and you can, you can probably just uh, buy or find some of the parts you need uh, just in the public domain or maybe buy them from a company that vends them uh, and will also offer you some support to just include, say you want to have an array, multi you, you want to have a, say an array multiplier or a barrel shifter in your final design, you just buy those and then you just uh, in, instantiate them in your design. Uh, or you maybe maybe you don't even have to buy them, and especially if you've already bought them before, you may be done. You may just may just have it on hand, and you can just plug it into your code. Um, okay, now we're going to start KMAPs. We'll start that on Wednesday.